Welcome back to Monitors Unboxed. I've been using my MSI MPG 321URX QD OLED exclusively as a productivity monitor for the last six months. And it's time to check in to see how the panel is faring when it comes to burn-in. Not much has changed in how I've been using this monitor. I've really been flogging it with a worst case usage scenario for OLED, but there have been a few changes compared to last time I looked at burn-in. Now, if you missed the last two updates, I'd recommend going back and checking out at least the initial video just so you get an idea of the setup I'm using and why I've decided to use MSI's 4K 240Hz QD OLED gaming monitor as my workstation display. But basically, the idea here is to perform a real-world test of OLED longevity in the worst possible configuration, effectively burning in the display on purpose. I swapped my 32-inch 4K IPS LCD for this new QD OLED and changed nothing else about my setup, so no dark mode or screensavers or anything like that, and that's to see whether OLED monitors really can be used as LCD equivalent productivity displays long term. Today's video is sponsored by the Ugreen Nexo 20,000 mAh power bank, a lightweight portable power bank with 130 watts of total power output. This is a super neat product with a TFT smart display on the front, showing you important info such as capacity, charge times, and input output power per port. It has a huge airline approved 20,000 mAh capacity, and the first USB C port can push up to 100 watts of power, perfect for charging laptops. This compact battery can deliver a 43% charge to a 16 inch MacBook Pro in just 30 minutes. It's really the perfect travel companion. So, to learn more about this U Green Nexode power bank, including the neat and compact 12,000 mAh 100 watt variant, click the link in the description below. I use my monitor more than 8 hours a day, and sometimes that usage is continuous with no breaks for the display to turn off and rest. This leads to hours upon hours of static usage in applications like web browsers, the Microsoft Office suite, including my personal favourite Excel, and production tasks like Adobe Premiere and Photoshop. With virtually no content consumption in my daily use of this display and zero gaming, this is not how we recommend using an OLED at all though this is a use case that has been perfectly fine for LCDs for a long time. After one month of usage, my 321URX had no signs of burn-in at all, which is as expected. At that point, I'd used the monitor for about 200 to 250 hours. After three months, I'd started to see faint signs of burn-in, and at that point, I'd used the display for approximately 650 to 750 hours with 71 panel compensation cycles. At this point, six months into the experiment, I would estimate usage to be between 1200 and 1500 hours, and the monitor is telling me it's run 141 compensation cycles. That lines up well with what I reported previously, about double the usage and about double the compensation cycles have been run. So we're still looking at between 9 and 10 hours of usage at 200 nits of brightness per compensation cycle. As I mentioned last update, the recommended rate for panel protect cycles is every 4 hours, so as part of my typical usage it's running less than half as often as is ideal. However, this is a totally realistic scenario for someone actually using this display for full-time work, especially if you don't put the monitor to sleep during breaks. I've set the display to sleep after two hours, which is far longer than I would recommend for general OLED use, but is the same settings that I was using for my LCD. Let's run through the burn-in examples, comparing progress after one month, three months, and six months, focusing on the center of the display, which is where I saw the most signs of burn-in previously. For the darkest greys, there isn't much of a difference between each of the months, with burn-in really not affecting deep shadows. A couple of steps up the grayscale range, and there is a very faint line down the center of the display, with little to no difference between the three and six month examples. By the time we reach the fourth or fifth grayscale example in the lower part of the range, there's a small increase in burn-in between three and six months, but it's not to the point of being hugely different between those months. The line down the center of the screen, which is the point of separation between two side-by-side -side apps in Windows, is a little more defined and noticeable after six months, but it's not drastically worsened after double the amount of usage. When we reach middle greys, the faint line is still visible and a little more defined after six months versus three months, but in this range the line is harder to spot than in darker greys. For brighter shades and closer to white, there's really no visible burn-in at all, even after six months. This is also true when viewing fully saturated colors. When blasting reds, greens, and blues, there is no visible burn-in at all. It's when viewing darker colors that burn-in starts to become more visible, and here we can separate the burn-in components per subpixel. 
Looking at blue, there is slightly more burn in after 6 months versus 3 months, though this subpixel seems to be surviving well. The red subpixel is also degraded slightly more, but not to the point of being overly visible even in these stress tests. However, the green subpixel has clearly more burn in than the other subpixels, even if it's still faint overall and there's not been much difference between 3 months and 6 months. The biggest difference I've noticed between 3 and 6 months is that the taskbar area is showing more visible signs of burn-in now than 3 months ago. I'm not hiding my taskbar during usage, but it is set to Windows dark design with light mode for applications. It's difficult to see in some of the dark grey examples I captured, but it is visible in real life, so I created a burn-in enhancement filter for my footage so I can more clearly show the differences. This filter enhances the contrast above natural levels and is applied the same to all footage which was captured the same way every month. When using the burn in enhancement filter, you can see that while the line down the center of the screen isn't substantially different between three and six months, the taskbar area is more noticeably burned in. Flicking between footage of the filter turned on and off really highlights that this area of the screen is affected after six months. The same look at the three month footage shows some impact to the taskbar area, but not as much as after six months. However, as I'm almost always looking at a screen with the taskbar in place, this burn in has yet to have any visible impact. Even when viewing full screen videos or applications, it's hard to notice unless the entire screen is static and some sort of dark shade. It's not great to see visible taskbar burn in after 1300 ish hours of use, but it's also not that problematic. What I am starting to notice though is the vertical line down the center of the screen. In applications that use a baseline dark gray background, the line is definitely visible, though not that distracting. For example, in Photoshop and Premiere, apps that I use all the time, I can definitely spot this line at times. Typically, it requires most of the screen to be relatively dark as bright sections, like if I'm working on a thumbnail in Photoshop, those tend to hide the issue and make small differences in dark areas harder to notice. It's not at the point of harming my daily use and it really has little to no impact on my workflow, but it wouldn't be happening with an LCD after 1300 hours of use. After another six months, I can't imagine this line will get any less noticeable. So throughout the rest of my time using this QD OLED, it's likely going to be a visible artifact. As for screen brightness, there's been no reduction in peak SDR brightness capabilities across my six months of use. As of today, my display is capable of 243 nits of full screen white brightness compared to 238 nits when I reviewed the monitor. So it's actually 2% brighter now, though this could be due to slight differences in meter position, calibration settings, and so on. Over time, the expectation is that compensation cycles and burn-in prevention features will reduce peak brightness to keep the display as uniform as possible, but that is yet to occur on my unit. So what to make of these burn-in results after six months? Well, as expected, the monitor is showing visible signs of burn-in after 1200 to 1500 hours of exclusive static app usage. There is a faint line down the center of my monitor relating to me snapping apps side by side, and there is some burn-in around the general taskbar area. Relative to my three month update, burn in has gotten slightly worse for the vertical line and moderately worse for the taskbar area. However, burn in is not having a significant impact on my usage of the display and it's close to, though not quite, a non issue. 1200 to 1500 hours of use is the equivalent of eight hours a day, five days a week for 30 to 38 weeks. So I would anticipate that with full time productivity work during normal work hours, using the monitor in a bright configuration with no steps taken to minimize burn-in, that burn-in will likely start to become visible six months after you start using it. Running the monitor in a more OLED-friendly configuration like with dark mode, a screensaver after five minutes of inactivity, and at a lower brightness level, that should extend the lifespan substantially and prevent burn-in from becoming noticeable after six months. I can't say exactly how much impact it will have, but I'd like to think that more friendly usage conditions would more than double its life. Burn-in with OLEDs is also directly related to hours of usage and is cumulative. So if you only use static apps for four hours a day, you should expect to see your lifespan double versus using it eight hours a day. But slotting in four hours of gaming between four hours of static app usage is unlikely to improve burn-in by running a more mixed workload. You'll still see 1500 hours of cumulative static app usage after a year of daily use in that way, 
which should lead to similar burn-in to 1500 hours of app usage where the monitor is only used for static apps. Basically, you can't reverse burn-in on an OLED by playing some dynamic content every once in a while to clean the screen. However, dynamic content itself is unlikely to cause burn-in. While these burn-in results are not ideal for heavy productivity users, and I'm going to continue not recommending OLED for those use cases, I think the results aren't too bad for people primarily buying these screens for gaming. Let's say you do 15 hours of web browsing a week on your monitor in addition to gaming and watching videos. To get the sorts of results I've seen after 1200 to 1500 hours, you're probably looking at two years of usage, and that's if you take zero steps to mitigate burn-in a bit of dark mode and not running at 200 nits, you're probably going to extend that to three or four years, and at that point the monitor will still be quite usable even if there is some burn-in. This also aligns with what I've seen on my Alienware AW3423DW, where I've seen far less burn-in than on my 321URX, despite using it for more than two years, primarily for gaming of course. Anyway, this experiment will continue on for many more months, so I'll continue to update you on how burn-in is progressing in a couple of months from now. So far though, OLED as expected is probably not the best for productivity use and desktop applications with a lot of static content on the screen, so we're going to continue recommending these primarily for people who are doing gaming and other sorts of dynamic content consumption and mixed use cases where OLEDs are primarily used for gaming, but perhaps with a little bit of productivity and desktop app usage mixed in. If you are going to be using an OLED mostly for productivity apps like I've been doing, I would strongly recommend that you don't do that and buy an LCD instead. Anyway, that's it for this one. If you do appreciate our OLED burn-in updates and me destroying this MSI monitor on purpose, then please do consider supporting us directly via Patreon or Flipplane. Links to those are in the description below. You'll gain access to some cool benefits like our Discord community, BTS stuff, monthly live streams, plenty of interesting content in there. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.